Bacchanalia, we included it in our inaugural season for several different reasons. And one of them was because there is a bit of an homage to the, the roots of theater. I found Greek mythology so captivating and enticing as material to work with because in comparison with all the other ancient myths, the Greek gods underneath it all, they are humans, each one of them, and they each character examines a very deep part of our own humanity that is still ingrained in our culture today. We wanted um, to be true to the classical Greek theater. And so Jesse and I had decided that there were two choruses that we definitely wanted, wanted to have featured throughout. One of those being the philosophers and the other being the Baki. Their worldview is solely physical. What you can see, taste, touch, smell, that's the Baki. And they come upon the philosophers with this warlike tension. The philosophers represent our desire to ascend to something higher than our desires uh, physically are. It is a show that is about the bastard children of Zeus. Artemis and Apollo are in direct conflict with Bacchus at the very core. You know, they kind of represent knowledge and self-restraint and order and logic and you know the mind over the body. Of course they're going to be at odds with Bacchus which is you know representation of kind of the opposite side of the coin of the carnal aspects of humanity and at times madness and you know lust. This was part of the impetus for me having interest in the show in the first place. This you know dynamic conflict, this age-old conflict that lives within all of us. We didn't treat it as this archaic thing. And that's why there's a lot of dialogue that was written by actors, that was written by us, combined with ancient dialogue, and some of the ancient dialogue was rewritten, but we didn't try to categorize it in a past time. Blindness! <laughs> Tyrese, I'm so sorry. Uh, how can I make it up to you? Aha! I grant you the gift of foresight! Foresight, you idiot. Oh. Red, red wine <laughs> goes to my head. We also knew that we wanted a three act structure. Got this! In the classical style. And we knew that we wanted to move from comedy to more tragedy. There were some stories that we knew would fit into the mythos that, that we were going to create and explore. Things like the Minotaur and the Cyclops, which we originally put in there because it was based off of the only remaining satyr play that we have, which is by Euripides. We thought of tweaking it and putting a little part of it in between the two acts as a comic, you know, kind of lotsy of sorts, which is how they were historically done. I've also been a huge fan of Greek mythology since a young kid. I think that one of the first plays I ever acted in or had to put together was for a class when I was in maybe, I don't know, third grade and we were doing a little piece of Jason and the Argonauts. I've had a very good friend of mine say that Greek mythology is my football. So I was absolutely just in love with doing this piece from the get-go. A few different people said to me that this show, for you acting-wise, is a little bit of, of living some of your fantasies that you, you've had ever since you were, I don't know, a, a teenager and, and wanted to be a, a rock star of sorts. And there's some truth to it. Not that I knew that at the time. 